All right, I'm calling this meeting of the Shaftesbury Select Board to order on Monday, April 20, 2015 at 6.30. Uh, first up, I want to mention a couple of changes to the agenda. We have added uh, item 9. Uh, the fire chief wants to talk to us about some equipment he wants to order. And uh, Tony Krulikowski is going to give us a follow-up on some uh, uh, investigations he's done into our questions about community appropriations. That's at num uh, item 18. Does anyone have a conflict of interest with anything appearing on the agenda this evening? No. 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 Uh, approval of minutes. How many minutes are there? Uh, Quite a few. Hmm. Minutes for the special meeting on Friday, April 10th. I move we approve. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Minutes are approved, 500. Do I have those? Uh, they are, they're going to be the uh, second to last. One. The file starts with uh, March 2nd. Okay. I just started at what was at the top of my file. through this list then. Uh, <clears throat> minutes for Monday, April 6th, regular meeting. I move we approve. Second. Seconded by Mitch. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 <clears throat> Approved 500. <sighs> this is the Minutes for the select board meeting on town meeting night before town meeting. I move we approve. I need Art or Ken to second it. Second. Seconded by Art. Any just oh, let's see, no, it's uh, Tony or Art that are, were there right. with me. Okay. Sorry, Ken. Uh, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Abstain. Abstaining. Abstain. Is uh, Ken and Mitch. Minutes for town meeting on March 2nd. Okay, that was okay. okay. Same town time. meeting. I move we approve. Second. Seconded by Art. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Passes 302. Water board meeting on Mon on Monday, uh, April 6th. I move we approve. Second. Seconded by Mitch. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Passes 5-0-0. Zero, zero. Okay. Judy will be so happy. <laughs> Warrants. Check warrant number twenty one in the amount of thirty two thousand four hundred thirty five dollars and fifty six cents. I move we approve. Second. Seconded by Mitch. Items over $1,000. Uh, 1200 to wholesale distributors. Do you know what that is, David? I also have a uh, number of charges to William E. Daly at uh, around 2000 each. 
6,500 to Blue Cross Blue Shield, uh, 1,500 to the Sheriff, 1,300 to Door Oil, 1,100 to Green Mountain Power, 1,800 to Mountain Air Assessors, 2,300 to Telvent. I know what that is, but I can't remember. It's the uh, radar system in the garage. It's the last payment. Okay, we're, we're getting rid of that after today. <coughs> Any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Warrant is approved 500. Zero, zero. Do you know what Paul Stella was? Just the bits for the greater. Bits for the greater. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Thank you. This is a search and food as well. I have a retirement warrant. Number 21, in the amount of $127.34. I move we approve. Second. Seconded by Mitch. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion is approved 500. Payroll warrant. Payroll warrant number 21 in the amount of $18,773.15. I move we approve. Second. Seconded by Mitch. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. All right. Aye. Aye. Motion passes 400. Ken just stepped out. Uh, just do 400. Yeah, abstention is a little more formal than absent. Yeah. Did I get them all? Ken, we passed a payroll warrant while you were out. We trust your uh, approving. Are there any announcements? Yeah, just the uh, Ordinary Heroes Day at the Shaftesbury Historical Society is going to be May 30th, Saturday, May 30th, right. and it's I hope we fuel. can uh, get a lot of people attending. To get that on my calendar. There'll be more coming out about it. Yeah. Um, Dave, when is Green Up Day? Yeah, I'm looking for that. We're going to move that up now. We're going to talk about that later. But Green Up Day is May 2nd. Uh, there will be some changes this year. Uh, Karen Mellinger, who had been running it for, for a number of years, uh, will not participate this year. Uh, we're not going to be able to do some of the things that, that she had done before. Uh, we have limited volunteers, basically, uh, the rec committee consistent two people. So right now we'll have distribution at the places that have been dis distributed at before. The bags will be available and I'll start posting these. I got these from Karen today. We'll start posting where the bags will be available, which includes uh, Whitman's Feed Store, Paulin's, the Clearbrook Farm, Town Office, the Shaftesbury Landfill. There'll be a list of places where the bags can be left, including some roadside corners where the road department will pick them up afterwards. We are going to continue with, uh, Tam will live a small container here for that Saturday and uh, uh, the recommendation we're going to try and do something uh, to have someone here that you can pick up bags here for, for the day and, and go around and you can drop the, the uh, bags back here. Uh, we're going to try and uh, break this out a little bit more. We have to change some things again. Uh, if anyone's interested in, in helping out, it'll be on our website tomorrow. You can give me a call and we can uh, Try and try and uh, arrange some of the things that took place in the past, but uh, again, we're down to uh, virtually one or two volunteers, and we're not going to be able to do some of the things that went on before, like the uh, what was it, the, the lady bug rocks. Lady, ladybug rocks, which I understand there was 60 placed around the town or something mm -hmm. like that, and uh, uh, we just won't have the people to do that this year. In fact, I don't have anyone who's willing to do that at the moment. So. Um, if we can develop it a little bit more in the short span we have, then we'll, we'll take that on. But uh, 
the bags will be available to the usual locations and the drop-offs will be at the usual locations as they have been for the last several years and everything will go be on the website tomorrow okay well it's not too late if somebody wants to uh, either here or at home wants to step up and uh, take Karen's place and uh, yeah. placing the little uh, ladybug rocks out as incentives for the to get the kids out picking mm -hmm. stuff up and to help coordinate that whole effort um, let us know Mm -hmm. Are there any public comments? Yeah. Tyler Resch, come forward, please. Yeah. Uh, right. Just um, briefly, I was interested in a couple of items on your agenda. I wondered what happened to the road foreman situation, and also I wanted to see about the Cold Spring situation. So. Okay. Well, the, the road foreman situation is that the road, uh, Terry Stacy is no longer employed as road foreman. And as you may have read in the paper, uh, in accordance with a severance agreement that we're hoping that he will agree to, uh, we will not be commenting on his employment and he will not be commenting on his employment. So there's really not much more to say about uh, Terry. In the meantime, uh, Steve Washburn, our assistant, uh, road foreman will be acting as interim road foreman, and normal crew operations will continue with a five-man crew. Um, Cold Spring uh, is due to come up on the agenda. We're uh, due to uh, sign a work agreement with uh, Angus McCullough, the, the artist for the project. Uh, I have been working to uh, get more grants to, to move that project forward. The grant we have from Vermont's Arts Council allows us to do uh, art design and art fabrication, but not some of the stuff that uh, we need to do first, like uh, legal study, legal issues, and permitting, and that sort of thing. So I've been working to, uh, to apply for more grants. I kind of hit a wall with a lot of the grants. Uh, it's a small wall, but uh, they all require, they all have online applications these days, and they all require uh, all the ones I've gone to so far require a, uh, a letter stating our tax-exempt status. Uh, our tax-exempt status is written into statute, but you can't tell that to a, a web form. So, uh, but there is a way to acquire that, and I have made, uh, made that uh, process start. Should have that in a couple of weeks. And uh, the project is, uh, is going forward. Did you have any specific questions? Did you draw up uh, plans yet? No, that's what uh, the, the, the design of the site will be uh, the first item of business that uh, Angus will work on, and that's what the work agreement that we're, we're going to uh, look at tonight addresses. And we'll allow him to uh, use $1,900 to uh, start that work and give us a design, uh, to start working on a design. And if you're interested in helping with the design, we would love to have your input. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Great. Any other public comments? All right, Treasurer's Report, Melanie Dexter. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I've been uh, digging deeper into the numbers than I had at the last meeting. Um, I, I don't think anything has changed. Nothing substantive has come up to change the picture for the uh, projection to the end of the year. Um, so we're right. We're still on track to uh, finish very slightly ahead of budget. I think that's pretty much what you've been hearing, and mm -hmm. it, it looks like that's still that nothing has happened to change that. Okay, so we know we're over budget on highways, but we have other savings that we're yes. anticipating will make that up and yep. keep us a little bit ahead. Great. And there's still some revenue coming in that, you know, it, there's there's a margin of error around everything, but it, it looks pretty good. Um, something we could still have another snowstorm, you know. <laughs> but uh, there's right snow now. snow in the forecast for Wednesday. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Steve probably knows that. Um, so, yeah, right now it looks like pretty much what the the picture was a couple weeks ago. It's still looking the same. Okay. Any questions for Melanie? I uh, <clears throat> uh, we're, the next 
task I know is on a horizon at some point is setting the tax rate. I guess mm -hmm. that's, uh, we typically do that in August, I was being reminded today. Yeah. So mm -hmm. uh, just letting you know that I thought of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been hearing, hearing rumors yeah. about that, yeah. That, that should not be hard. That's really just a matter of making sure we have the latest grand list value mm -hmm. and uh, the budget number, and that pretty much divides out. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you. Good job. Road foreman report. Steve Washburn, welcome. <coughs> so, what's it like out there? Oh, we scraped most of the last week. We got some made the difference, made it better for people to get around. Unfortunately, we still have some frost that's coming out and making a mess in a few spots, but it doesn't seem appear to be too bad yet. Uh, doing what we can with it to try to get people around back and forth to school and work. Mm -hmm. Where are the worst spots right now? Daniels Road is fairly bad. Mm -hmm. um, there's a spot on Bros Hill, uh, Tinkham Road actually it's called, by actually the Bro entrance to the farm. It, it's kind of humped up a little bit there. Mm -hmm. Knocked the top of that off yesterday, well, last week one day, and put a little stone in there to try to get it to bind up a little bit. Uh, but it is what it is until it, until it comes out all the way to where we can actually smooth them up really good. But mm -hmm. we got as far as Avondale Meadows, getting it smoothed up on the west side, and we made it as far as where the Black Top ends, East Road to the Arlington line, all the way up there in Upper Maple Hill. We got part of that scraped, so it's. Mm -hmm. A lot better than it was two weeks ago. So what you're doing now is not, not, it's not real grading. What it's not going to be permanent. Smoothing it out. It, will, it won't stay until everything dries out enough to where it'll take shape and pack in and stay. Mm -hmm. So we're just trying to get them get them through for now. Okay. <clears throat> we did have a couple of calls. I might as well tell you now uh, on Parron Road again. But late late today they called. So. Okay. Uh, I mean, I drove it on Friday, so I don't know what happened in the interim, so. Uh, but if, if you could check it again tomorrow morning. Okay. In Madison Road, just before it comes on to Bennett Hill. Or, uh, Orton Hill. Orton Hill. Orton Hill. Okay. Uh, underneath the pine trees by Paul Watson. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I think it's worth noting, uh, Steve and I just commented before the meeting that places where they put the fabric last year on Murphy Hill and by Coal Spring, they haven't moved mm -hmm. an inch. It's just amazing. Didn't even mm -hmm. have to touch them with the graders. The just... difference that it's made, so mm -hmm. it, it works. It does work, and that's why part of what what the crew is watching for now is the places because we have such a limited budget. Yeah, is trying to pick the places that have the worst cases that need to be addressed right away, because uh, I think we're down to about 2,100 feet of fabric for this next fiscal year, which you know isn't very far. So we have to work looking yeah. for the worst worst patches that that we have and a lot of the pothole issues we uh, address with with more aggressive grading and using the scar fire to to get the holes out so I also think it's worth noting how uh, we were talking about um, using two graders in the same area so that the guy with the rake so it, it's it, we can't send one greater east and another greater west and the poor guy with the rake has to run in between because the yeah how, how quick you rake it is important mm -hmm. how how well it stays so what we've decided is that the two graders will work together that way the the rake and if mm -hmm. any chloride in the future and that sort of stuff yeah it's, t it's definitely steve and i talked about it, it definitely saves a lot of time uh having everything going in one direction and uh, getting them raked and chloride as, as quick as possible after the grade is done is... Uh, Unfortunately, the first time around, we couldn't do it that way and the phone would ring right off the wall if we didn't yeah. did that. <laughs> yes, he was saying, I agree, you know, at, at this time, it's one pass to get everything kind of back. Yeah. But then the, when we get into the real grading, which uh, we hope to be ongoing from now until the end of the year, you know, one moving all the time mm -hmm. to get it to work better, you know. Tyler. Can I ask you a question about this new application of an extremely coarse gravel? It's almost pebbles from the Madison Road. It's on Cold Spring. It's, it's very hard to, to drive through, and it tends to washboard itself. 
Is that going to be uh, done more in the future? Uh, they tried to make it bind together to mix the mix the stone in with the, the fines that are there and try to make it pack in. That was before you probably <laughs> too much stone. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, it seems to be too much stone. It, yeah. it doesn't seem to be mixing in. Well, uh, it, it will be mixed in when it's graded. Is that yeah, what? So we're going to have to add top coat gravel to in with it because it's so coarse. But That's what? You're going to have to add uh, top coat gravel in to, to mix in with it to make it so it's not so coarse. Um, he did it so that if it went to mud, it would kind of try his. This was Terry's. The theory was that it was going to try to tighten up the material that was there. If it, if it decided to go to mud, there would be something on top for people to kind of drive on and push down into it. Okay, well, I'll just make the point that it's uh, it's, it's very hard to drive through and, uh, mm -hmm. and, it, and it, tends to, it tends to wash more. Well, the only thing you can do is. It is, Joe, that you do with it. It's the only thing we can do, Tyler, when, it, when, it, when it goes to mud. Yeah, it's. Plenty of mud before. Well, I think what we're saying is the when the roads are impassable due to mud, about the only thing we can do to make them passable is to dump gravel on them. And, the yeah, it's not great, but it, we're talking about a standard that's passable or not passable at that, at that point. Any other questions, comments about the roads? No, uh, we're working on Steve getting settled in. Uh, just going over a lot of the different things, cleaning up a little bit, and uh, just getting reorganized to get going. Um, we do have the uh, license for the RSMS 11, which will do budgeting and road planning that, that Steve's going to get involved in with me. Uh, and we're all getting up and running. It's going to take a little couple weeks to transition here, but uh, we'll be up and running with uh, new plans very soon. Yeah. Well, the first thing we'll be asking you for, uh, one of the first things we'll be asking you for is a list of, of road projects for the summer. As David said, we've got budget for maybe 21 feet of, um, 2100 feet, 2, feet, of, of feet, <laughs> 21 <laughs> feet yeah, of rebuilding, 21 feet, yeah, of rebuilding. And so we'll want to target those, those worst areas and we'll be looking to you to tell us okay. uh, where those are. Some, some of those areas, Tim, that are bad right now, you might want to figure that if you're going to rebuild them in the summer, you might want to put in French drains in there, too, if there's really a lot of water. Mm -hmm. Because the fabric is great. I don't dispute that a bit. But you've got to get rid of if there's a lot of water underneath. you got to get rid of the wall. You know that anyway. Um, question I'll, I'll ask all of you guys who know stuff more about me than Rhodes, but... Uh, Dave and I are reading uh, some places that say uh, the the gravel base of the roads, including the fabric, um, is uh, has a lifetime of 20 years. And I know I, I've been told that we have roads in uh, in the hollow, for example, that were uh, the roads were laid without a base. Do we know that to be true? I, I wouldn't doubt it. I can't. Mm -hmm. Well, what they used to do, Tim, uh, good examples of East Road, uh, what they would do when they widened those roads, because most roads used to have a stone wall on either side, and the road would be actually down in a hole. And to raise them up, they would take the stone walls on both sides and just put them in there. And then you build your road over that. But they wasn't, I mean, fabric has only been around for, mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe 20 years. Mm -hmm. I know Horton Hill was done that way. I can remember trees and everything on both sides, and it was just one day mm -hmm. it was just all pushed in the middle, and then they started yeah, building on top of that. And that's what it does cause a lot of problems with a lot of the roads, especially <coughs> as stumps. stumps are put as the base of the road and they break down. You know, you have a sinking roadway and, and big rocks and big, in there. Yeah, and big rocks, and then it becomes difficult. You have to be able to build a base over the top of all that. Once it blows off and gets scraped off over the years. Uh, you're back to the big rocks that are <laughs> impossible to work with. And of course, the stump's rotting away and the roads are just caving in. So th there were a lot of issues with a lot of the roads that are being caused by that, I think. And up through the hollow, yeah, if, it, if they were done that way, we have to put a base in and uh, get it. But a good example of where it worked is up on Murphy Hill, where it's very smooth. You cross the hill and you, you hit mud. Uh, 
But again, Eric, Eric Road is a good example. Eric Road, yeah. Mm -hmm. Parent Road. Yeah, Parent the, the first part. Uh, and those are the things we have to we have to plan out with uh, what little we have. Not to mention our 20 miles of paved road that need to be addressed too. So we, we need to look look more into the next budget year for increasing some of these things. The the other thing, David, too, is that Route Seven A is just like a divider of the town. Mm -hmm. On the west side of town, most of everything over there is either clay or slate gravel. And slate gravel's second because of the clay. Mm -hmm. And everything on the east side of town is more granular glacial stone. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have more trouble with the west side. Sounds about accurate. <laughs> <laughs> that doing it all my life. Yeah. <laughs> Well, just one thing I was realizing when we were talking about that, if, if that's in fact the case, if roads, the road base has a 20-year lifetime and we've got 50 miles of gravel road, um, we should be laying two and a half miles of fabric a year. <laughs> yeah. or laying a half a mile of fabric a year. Yeah. So, uh, and that, That's the thing we're going to have to look at it, is at some point we're going to have to increase the amount we're doing just to maintain. Uh, increasing the maintenance will keep the roads that we have from, from getting worse and the roads that are working, though, it'll extend their life. But at some point, we're going to have to increase the capital expenditures to start catching up on where we're behind. And it's not just the gravel on the paved roads. Uh, I've got a small estimate or, or a large estimate for a small section of Harvest Hills, and uh, we need a lot more money for paving. Uh, because most of those paved miles are our responsibility, and uh, paving is expensive. Mm -hmm. I mean, for a town or something, we have 20 miles of paved road. That's our responsibility. So that's, you know, a lot of miles, and a lot of it hasn't been done in many, many years. Uh, one way might help some, Dave, was Bennington a couple <coughs> of years ago. They just took a little machine down there and made turned about probably a mile of paved road into dirt road. And left it? Left it. Yeah. A lot of towns are doing I'll leave that decision up to the board. I'm not going to mill it. No, no, but I, mean, I just, I, I just, well, that's what we because did. paved road is way more park expensive. Road. Well, that's what they right. did with the state yeah, park yeah, road last year, too. They reclaimed road. it and smoothed it out. It's no longer tar. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's just but there are political issues with that. People who uh, paid to live on a paved road yeah. uh, might not want it turned into. Suddenly they wake up one morning to a gravel road they might be a little <laughs> <laughs> it depends on how bad the paved road yeah but on the other hand it slows the traffic down <laughs> yeah. well on some roads i've seen some yeah. roads where uh, whether they're gravel or paved it doesn't seem to have much of a difference okay all right thank you steve thank you steve, thank you, steve. Thank you. all right joe vatican our fire chief has uh wants to talk to us about some equipment that the volunteers need I've got s several proposals um, for some equipment that we'd like to purchase. Um, yeah. Steve, I gave him copies of everything. Uh, so Steve yeah, I can scroll through, yeah. through this on screen if that's helpful. Mm -hmm. The first one you have is pagers. Mm -hmm. um, I am proposing to buy three pagers. Um, at this point, that would go to the chief, to assistant chiefs. Um, we have a new person that joined a couple weeks ago, so he's he took my last reserve pager, so I have no more. I'd like to keep one reserve pager in house, so that if somebody breaks their pager, I can give them one, because the pagers are sent to Wells Communication. Wells Communication, they don't fix them because they're under warranty factory warranty, so they're sent to California to be fixed. So there's a lot of lead time from when I have them uh, given to be fixed and, and getting them back. So what I do is I give them my reserve pager, and then, so this will give me another reserve pager and um, kind of keep ahead of the pagers so that we don't all of a sudden have 10 or 12 that are no longer usable and then we got to spend some really big money 
Um, this also comes with a, a three-year warranty plus a one-year warranty that comes naturally with the Patriots. Uh, I think that's on there someplace. Yeah, three-year extended service warranty. Uh, charger and, um, and that's about it. And so you can see that the cost is uh, four hundred twenty-eight dollars eighty-six cents for each pager. Mm -hmm. So that's that would come out of the uh, communications budget. All right now, you said uh, for you and the assistant chiefs, this yeah. is to replace the pagers that you have. Or? It would it would it would give us a spare. I would take my pager and I would use it as a spare. And then we'd have two more spares for the time. Oh, being. so you only have one pager right now? I only have one pager and oh, spare. Okay. Actually, I don't have any now because the young man that joined a couple weeks ago, I gave him my last pager. So. Okay. Um, so, um, do all the volunteers have pagers? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you're just needing three more to, yeah, just to outfit three more everybody. To add to I got what you. We have. Okay. If um, I have a pager that's past its warranty, and something happens to it, it's not worth fixing because sometimes it's pretty costly to fix. Then I would have another pager just to put into uh, service. Mm -hmm. um, just in case, uh, I'm the only one that didn't know this until today, but I looked it up. And the, the thing about pagers is, is they operate off satellite signal, not off a cell phone tower signal. So it's not good enough to to have a to so. call everybody's cell phone when when there's a fire going because uh, cell phone signals are not reliable. Pager signals are. Okay. Um, and the next one is float dock strainer. Uh, float dock strainer, where I, what I'm proposing is to replace two that we have currently on two of our older trucks. Um, this style that we have now is relatively new. Um, the latest truck we bought, I bought this type of float dock strainer. And the difference between this uh, piece of equipment and the old style is the old style kind of came apart. It was very big and bulky and almost a two-man project to try to use it. Uh, and it also didn't work well when you put it in the water. If you had, didn't have it just right, it would suck air and create a vacuum within the pump and not uh, produce a good flow or a suction for the fire pump. Can this you back up and tell us what, what yeah. this is used for? This, this yeah. is hooked onto a large diameter hose, a hard suction that we hook into the pumps of the truck to get water from, say, a pond or a river. Uh, so you just throw it out in the pond? So we just throw it out. And this one is self-leveling, and one man can do it. It's a unit that's really no bigger than this, where the other one's, you know. So it floats, and that's, that floats, a, that's, yeah. that's a filter that piece, draws it in? Okay, okay. Yeah. That, that's what gives its ability to float, mm -hmm. keep it off the bottom from sucking yeah. debris. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've, I did get three prices, um, and my recommendation was the top price. It was the middle of the road, and we do um, it was up at the top. a lot of work with VRS sales. And Your recommendation is uh, the VRS? VRS sales quote. Like I said, it's it's about it's the lowest price, and we do a lot of work with them. Um, I actually contacted the company itself, Cocheck, which makes this type of strainer, and they were the most expensive, which I couldn't quite figure out. And uh, fifteen hundred is the cost for two of them. Uh, yeah, fourteen ninety six. Yeah, fifteen hundred. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, All right, and we have budget for that. Yeah, everything I have here is within my budget. Okay. Yeah, there's nothing that. In fact, we'll still have some um, room under my budget uh, after we're done with these purchases. So if we can move on to the next one, which would be. Is there any reason and the old old wood bulky ones? Are they just like just ready to throw away, or can you say give them to sell them to another? I don't see anybody wanting them. I mean, I, I wouldn't throw them away. Right. You know, if something happened to one of these guys. You can certainly use an old one temporarily. Oh, like one of the local other local. If somebody wanted them, I'd be more than happy to give them away. Absolutely, I I would put that out there. Uh, there's no need for them to sit in the back of the firehouse, but like I said, I definitely wouldn't throw them away. <coughs> um, turnout gear. Now, I've, I was pleasantly surprised by the prices that I got for turnout gear. Um, and my recommendation was um, at first, because I thought 
budget wise I could only afford to buy two sets but as I looked through the prices I was able to kind of um, figure things out and, and get a list of guys who I thought need re replacement gear now um, I was able to come up with three sets of gear and one coat um, and um, you can see the various prices from the dealers some are quite a bit more if, if, than the other two um, and what we did is about 10 or 11 years ago we received a grant from uh, FEMA and we were able to buy new gear for everybody it wasn't the best gear in the world but everybody was able to get gear and um, at about forty thousand dollars that gear is now starting to, to wear and I've been trying every year a couple of sets just to keep up with it and this is just an ongoing program I, I would say to uh, to replenish that gear mm -hmm. um, NFPA suggests that gear be turned over every five years but that's not practical for us we don't have that many fires or that many calls and the gear that we do turn over is mostly just interior guys so that's even a smaller group of guys guys that run the pump panels or, or direct traffic don't need brand new gear and theirs are more than adequate so this is mostly to replace gear for guys that are interior and um or fighting fire directly so mm -hmm. um so uh, as i said the price uh for coat and pants, um, for Viera sales was 1,825. Reynolds and Sons, which was fire decks, um, was 2,556. And then um, Globe, which is kind of one of the industry standards. Globe's been around for a long time. It's a, it's a well-known gear. Um, came in at 1667. Um, and when I had a, a meeting, I thought that was gonna be the most expensive. It ended up being the cheapest. So. Um, I was surprised there. Um, if we went with the globe, with the the three firefighters I had mentioned plus the one coat, it would be just about six thousand dollars, and came up to five ninety nine ninety seven. Mm -hmm. And again, that would be well within my, my budget limit of uh, equipment fund. You guys, so choose to go that way. Um, it's just the coats and pants. It's not a helmet and boots. They're, we're all set there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why is there so much difference in that? Is, uh, is all the different unit or different places, different the same equipment? No, they're not the same. Uh, last time I came here, I, can't, I gave prices on the same ones, and I was told that they it was preferred that I give prices from dealers that were local, so that if anything happens, they didn't fit. We got some way to go back to. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so these are all local. I say local. They're within an hour of here. You know, I I know all these places. Mm -hmm. So um, if if the pants don't fit because they were measured wrong or, or whatever it may be, we could go back and say, listen, this isn't right. Where what I'm saying, Joe, is you, the twenty five hundred dollar one is is that equipment good enough? to be that much more money than the, the $1,600? I mean, I don't want to buy equipment that's not going to keep a man safe in a fire. Yeah, I've looked at all three sets of gear. Yeah. And I think that, I mean, maybe you can make arguments for your own gear if you're a salesman, but I think they're all um, comparable. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to say for sure that one's better than the other, but for a thousand dollars are you really getting what you pay for yeah so that that's my only thing yeah, well, like i say i i want to make sure them guys are safe when they're in a the fire as safe yeah. as they can be if you go with the glow i've seen glow being used by the north bank fire department yeah. uh, their whole department has it um, they received a grant and that's what they bought and they're very happy with it All right and um, it's holding up well. And Globe comes and measures the individuals for the measure. That's why they, they take the responsibility. If I went with just, say, you know, Globe and got three prices, one may be from a dealer, but the other two would have to be online because the dealer, this is his area. I can't go to Rhode Island and say, come on up, even though, you know, you sell Globe because you can't cross in each other's territory. 
-hmm. So, um, you know, so they're going to measure it and they're going to take responsibility for their measurements. If they're wrong, then it's on their shoulders. Mm -hmm. Do I understand correctly? Bergeron is the, the dealer and Globe That's is the, the manufacturer? Dealer. Yeah, Globe is the, is the, the gear. Firedex is the gear. Um, and Ricochet Air is the gear. And those are the salesmen, VR sales mm -hmm. rentals and Bergeron. Okay. Yeah. Is that it? There's one more. Is an application yep. pump. Yep. The Jaws of Life pump. This is the pump. I, I, I mentioned it once before, yeah. a while back, months well, ago. We're doing our budget. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Dave and I sat down and tried to figure out where we could get the money from without going over budget and, you know, not stranding us without money within our budget my first idea was to take it from the reimbursement fund that's why it was created to replace extrication <coughs> um, equipment but then david and i talked and we realized that if we order this right we could pay for it from our budget this year and then our fiscal budget of next year <coughs> that would save that money that's in that reimbursement fund for more emergencies or something may come down the future that we don't know about. Um, well, this is in FY16, which uh, is budgeted for FY16, which comes available July 1, but you're saying you want to get it now? I, I, not today. If we ordered it a, a month and a half from now, it's certainly fine. You know, But if we, could, if we paid it from two different fiscal years, it wouldn't be a burden on either year, like, Ten thousand um, dollars, almost. And at one point, you were talking about two pumps. Right. And there's there was yes some ideas there, but you know, for now this is going to do well for us. Um, we've got some other ideas for later on, maybe in a year or two, uh, where maybe that reimbursement would come <coughs> into play, but would be a burden with the taxpayers. But this is you know what we're thinking right now. Um, this would, this would get rid of that old worn out pump um, and <coughs> give us the ability to use all our tools to full capacity at this point. Is, is this, I mean, is it, are, are our tools, I mean, this is a brand new pump, obviously, it's newer than the tools. Are the tools calibrated to handle a pump like this? Actually, the tools are new. Okay. Yeah, we bought the tools a couple of years ago. Okay. So the, the tools, are, it's kind of like hand in hand. Now, we couldn't afford everything at one time, so we bought the tools. Now we're buying the pump to help. Oh, they're, out, they, they're, yeah. they're specced out for this yeah. pump. You're not going to get on and something and just blow the whole tool out of the hell. No, no, no. <laughs> that's, no. That's, okay, that's all. Yeah, we don't want a pump that's without man or tools, obviously. But um, the, And that's why you, know, you kind of have to buy it from the same um, dealer because you can't cross you know, like Ford parts and Chevy parts, it just doesn't, you know, mix and match. So. And this is also because we need, we, it's more ordering in advance because it's not going to be like delivered tomorrow. Right. You know, so it, we need the money from fiscal 16 that we had budgeted for extrication equipment. It's more like to get the order in because we want permission to do it now so that we can Mm -hmm. Get it on time. And we'll tell them when we want it delivered. We'll give them a delivery date, whatever's convenient for us. Okay. Yeah, not a problem. If this is within their budget, you don't need a motion from us then. Well, um, typically we pass motions for all large expenditures, okay. but uh, I, just in terms of uh, identifying vendors and that sort of thing. Okay. Uh, these are. Uh, these are all in the uh, the three to ten thousand dollar range that right. requires quotes, but not uh, uh, closed bid solicitation. So uh, I think it's appropriate to uh, to pass a motion. Okay, I make that motion that we that uh, we follow Joe's recommendations and let him order it. All right. Second. We we have a motion and it is seconded to. Uh, take the fire chief's advice and spend uh, $1,706.58 on pagers. Uh, 
uh, $1,496 for two float dock strainers. Is that each? Each. Two. Uh, that's it. That's total. That's for two. $1,400 is? Total. Is for two. For two. For two, or is for it? Two. For two. For two. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And $1,667.91 for turnout gear. No. No. $5,900. Yeah, I, I, I broke Sorry. it down so you can see how Oh, there it is. Yeah. That, that would be the total for. Okay. $5,999.97 for turnout gear. That was it. Oh, no. And $9,800 for an extrication pump. And David, you can fill in those blanks later with your, <laughs> with your notes. <laughs> okay. Any discussion? No. All in favor say aye. 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 Very good. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Joe. I have a letter for you that you can bring to the next meeting. It's um, the three chiefs were elected last oh, week. okay. So for your uh, approval, uh, okay. I'll okay. submit that to you for me All first. All right. Very good. Thanks, okay. Joe. Great. Good. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Joe. Joe, can I call you tomorrow? Um, is that your number, 3-4-0-0-6-1? Okay, can I give you a call? Are you going to be around tomorrow at all? Yeah, I'll be around. Okay. Just yeah. for the Shastray Historical Society to get you to walk through. Okay, yeah. Okay. Thanks. <coughs> all right, item 10 is the uh, artist work agreement for the Cold Spring Project. I uh, was negligent once again and just got this out today. Uh, to the distribution, but we can read through it. It's not very long. It says, Agreement for Art Design and Fabrication Services. This agreement confirms the engagement of Angus McCullough by the Town of Shaftesbury, Vermont, for art design and fabrication services for the Cold Spring Historic Site Project. Angus McCullough, working under the direction of Project Leader Tim Skigans, will provide $15,000 in art design and fabrication divided as follows. That's the entire Vermont Art Council grant, and it will all go toward art fabrication and design. Uh, 4800 in art design fees and uh, $10,200 in fabrication and insulation cost. This agreement sets design fees for the first phase of the design work. Subsequent agreements will set fees for later phases of design and fabrication. This is to get us started with uh, some sort of design to uh, uh, be able to say what this project is going to look like. Uh, some of the things that uh, Angus and I have talked about as far as what the art might be, uh, perhaps a sculpture that is uh, reminiscent of the, the pipeline and the water distribution system at Cold Spring. Uh, another idea we've kicked around is maybe something uh, inlaid in the ground that shows uh, pipe distribution. That's, uh, that's just where we've gotten so far, and so far we're just really brainstorming. So. Um, really, we don't know what this project is going to look like yet, and that's what uh, some of what his art design fees will do in this first phase. But we do know we would like to uh, uh, create a, a place that commemorates the history there, uh, allows people to step off the road and uh, see the springs flowing, and if uh, the permit gods allow, to, uh, to drink the water someday. Um, Certainly you can go there now and drink the water and no one's going to stop you, and I do that regularly. But uh, if we turn it into a park, there will no doubt be, uh, be issues there. The agreement goes on to say, at the direction of the project leader, Angus McCullough will provide services that include site maps and drawing. One thing our, uh, Angus has already done uh, without being paid for is he's taken a, uh, the 1865 survey of the pipeline that I got from uh, Joe McGovern and he's overlaid it on a map. So, uh, Art, you were talking about following where that pipe goes and uh, looking, uh, making sure that everyone along the route is, is aware and knows that their rights will be protected. Now we can do that because we, uh, we, we can see where that goes on, a, on an actual map. Uh, research the oral history of the site, an interview with neighbors, uh, concise, elegant drawings of the proposal, hand-drawn and CAD and otherwise site models, multiple sketch models, and or presentation model, begin sculpture and fountain design, one or more photo renderings of proposed project, three-part booklet of site history, design precedents, and proposals, 
physical model, create material for press purposes or fundraising to be done by the town of Shaftesbury, lead neighborhood meetings, design charrette, which is a new word for me, but that's when, uh, when artists brainstorm, they call it a charrette, uh, speak at town meeting, etc. Um, expected total hours spent for first phase of work, 50 to 60 hours at $35 an hour, which is uh, $1,750 to $2,100 and he would like to get $1,900 now to, uh, to start work. Uh, I move we approve the work agreement. Do I have a second? Can I have a second for discussion purposes? Second for discussion purposes. Thank you. Discussion? Okay. Yeah. So is this money, you've already got the grant. We've got, obviously, it's been, where is this money? Is it in the town or is it in the reserve fund? It's in, the, it's in the town's bank account. Yeah, it's in the town's bank account. I, was, I believe, and she's not here, but I believe a, a special fund was created. The money's segregated off the side. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a separate fund that only this can, can only fund money for this project can come out of. It's not, it's just separate from the town funds. Okay. I'm concerned we got the cart before the horse until we find out what the legal ramifications are of somebody else doing something there as as mr. Daly said there not only are is there water rights to the water but there's also rights to the physical property that's there and when, when we start doing stuff around there I want to make sure that that we have a legal that there that we are doing it legally and I think the only way you can do that is by getting permission from all the people that have water rights there. That's, I, I, I'm hesitant about, because if I understand it, if this thing is stalled someplace, we owe the money back. In two years. We do. And the most that uh, we're proposing to spend now would be $1,900. And the reason, reason we need to spend this now is because people need to know what this looks like. Uh, if we try to do fundraising, or uh, get grants, we can. We have a better chance of doing that if we have a more concrete proposal. Uh, what we have now is just what I have have described. And with nineteen hundred dollars, we can move down the road on showing what this project will look like, get more community support for it, uh, raise those additional funds. Um, what you say is absolutely true, and I'm working on that. Uh, but I have to acquire other grant funds to pay for those legal fees. So you don't see that as part of Angus's responsibility? You see that as somebody else's responsibility? Correct. I see that as my responsibility uh, to, uh, to, to make sure that the permitting and the legal issues are, are fleshed out. But yeah, no, Angus is not going to do uh, legal issues and permitting. He's going to design a space at Cold Spring for us. You're talking about putting the fountain up down there on that too? As I understand it, or am I? Uh, yes, that's what I would like to do, yes. Well, this is going to be a. Where does that pipe it? And that runs someplace, that water, don't it? Isn't there a water line that comes out of that? There are several uh, water lines. There's the main water line that goes for a mile down to Park McCullough House. Uh, several people have water lines there that get their household water from there. And then uh, lots, uh, lots of water continues to flow into Cold Spring Brook and flows down, down the countryside. Well, most of those lines have been there for a long, long time, I would think. Yes, a long time. So you might want to be pretty careful if you start poking around in there. Of turn course. Turn somebody's water off. Of course we will. Well, no, I'm just... State the fact, I guess, or the obvious, you might say. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but I mean, we're not going to do anything nearly as drastic as Art and company did a few years ago when they dug it up and filled it full of gravel to make sure that the water continued to flow. Uh, we're not going to do anything nearly that invasive. I, I just see this growing to be a line item in the budget for the taxpayers to pay for, unless you're going to apply for grants every year. Uh, you got to, you got to. A uh, uh, fountain. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to winterize that. You're gonna have to start it up in the spring. You're gonna have to maintain it. It's. 
I mean, just getting it there is going to cost what what we you figured about fifty five thousand to start or whatever fifty, mm -hmm. and then maintaining it every year is going to be another five to ten on the on the, on the five no. to ten thousand dollars to winterize a fountain. Well, in maintenance when it breaks, pick up the trash. Something doesn't happen. As long as I'm alive, I'll pick up the trash because it's down. Well, the street but that's my us. concern. <laughs> that if you come in a line item for the town. Um, it, I mean, I'm all for historical park. preservation, obviously. Uh, I don't think, I mean, that's I just said my two cents. We don't spend five to ten thousand dollars a year on Howard Park. Well, we're not going to yes, spend five to ten thousand yes, dollars a year on. We do spend five to ten thousand dollars a year at Howard Park and more than that. Um, that's not the point. I'm just saying that's a park. That's a public. This is a park. We're gonna we're gonna establish another park, or are we gonna establish a historic site? You're asking, is it gonna be a park or a historic site? I heard I heard historic, and I heard you say park. Um, I would think of it as a park. I mean, it's not much more than a historic site. There's not gonna be anything there except perhaps a drinking fountain, and maybe not that. But it would be. Uh, somewhere between a park and a historic site. I don't understand why that's an important distinction. Well, you just said you were just compared to Toward Park, which was, I didn't even go near well. I was, right. So I'm, I'm just be, saying that it's a... Maybe a 200 square foot park that's gonna cost five to $10,000 a year. That's what I was questioning. If something happens to a pump on a fountain, it's gonna cost more, it's gonna, it's gonna cost money. Um, that's my two cents. I, I agree with Art in that I think we are putting the cart before the horse. I think we need to know legally whether we can have access at all to that area. I think it's a great idea to commemorate a historic site, <clears throat> but before you do that, you need to know. And you're not willing to risk $1,900 to make that happen? I mean, the, the, the initial design, the having something to look at will go a long way toward allowing me to get the money I need to solve those legal issues. The town did not give me the money I needed I to, to start I those legal issues I think going, for, so I think now I'm doing reason, it all from grants. I think for a reason they didn't give you that authority. I think people are concerned about their water rights. I well, there's a chicken easy. and egg question here. They mm -hmm. want to know what it is they're paying for, yep. and I've got to have money to yep. tell them what it is they're I know. paying for. I know. I know. All we're asking for here is nineteen hundred dollars. Any more discussion? All in favor of agreeing to the work agreement for art design and fabrication at Cold Spring say aye. 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 All opposed? No. Aye. Motion fails two to three. So, gentlemen, what would you have me do? Abandon the project? I think put it on hold until you get a legal opinion. And I don't know how you do that with the money. But I think a legal opinion is important mm -hmm. before we go poking around. Okay. Does McCullough Given history, does the McCullough House or Foundation have any of that information that's readily available in the archives? Um, archives, uh, they have some information. More information is probably at UVM. Uh, I haven't made the trek to UVM to dig that up, but I've, I've tracked down, I think, where it's at. Well, would Angus be able to do some of that legwork? That was what that motion was for. I would think, given the fact that he's a McCullough, that he may want to, in fact, investigate his heritage. Yeah, well, you would have thought Shaftesbury would want to investigate their heritage, too, but we just demonstrated that we don't. All right, let's move on. Property purchase on North Road. We have some documents to sign. Yeah, the first thing is a uh, capital improvement note. Th this is from the last meeting. Uh, the board have approved the, getting the note $40,000 to purchase the property on North Road pending uh, legal review. Uh, the lawyers changed uh, a couple of words in the resolution. 
Uh, so it was all redone by People's Bank, and this is just a sign that it's the exact same thing. It's 2% interest rate with no fees involved with it. It's three annual payments of $13,334 a year. Uh, the first payment in 2016, the last payment in 2018. And it's the same documents as last week. This is the note. There's a certificate of registration that will be signed by the town's transfer agent, which is the treasurer. There's the capital improvement borrowing resolution from the town, same thing. That's what had to be changed because in the re original resolution, uh, the law office felt that it sounded like a balloon payment in 2018 instead of three equal payments. So the wording was changed to reflect three equal payments. There's also another form. It's the non-arbitrage certificate, just saying that we're going to use the money for what we said we're going to use it for. And they all have to be motioned and approved by the board. And just so you know, there's tax forms that also the treasurer has to fill out and sign. Send okay. In. But the, the basic is that it's the $40,000 note to buy the North Road property. It is not a traditional mortgage. It's a capital improvement bond. And it's for a rate of $13,334 a year. I believe okay. it's the total. All right. I move that we approve the capital improvement note to purchase the North Road property. Do I have a second? Second. second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Ken, Ken, stepped, Ken out. stepped out, so that motion is passed 4-0-0. Zero, zero, zero. I move that we approve the uh, capital improvement borrowing resolution for the North Road property. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mitch. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That is approved 400. I move that we approve the non arbitrage certificate for capital improvement borrowing for the North Road property. Second. Seconded by Mitch. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That is approved 400. Is that it for that one? That's it for that one. All right. We are up to Howard Park bid proposals. Uh, I circulated bid proposals for both the tennis courts and roof repairs at Howard Park. We to review. If they're approved, I'll uh, put them out uh, by the end of the week on the website and in the appropriate places and contacting a few contractors. Uh, I want to make one change to cool. the uh, roof repair bid. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right, too. Um, and that will just be to add on replacing the fascia boards and uh, uh, just a little <coughs> other woodwork that's that's damaged. I should have included that in the roof repair bid. In the scope of work? <coughs> work, yes. Yeah, so I'll just add so, that in there. So what is it you want to say? It'll be uh, just adding in uh, repairs to the fascia boards and uh, other minor carpentry work. Is that for the roof bid? Yeah, that's for the roof bid. Is that FACIA or? Yes. Okay. Repair fascia boards and other minor carpentry. and do other minor carpentry. Yes. All right. Okay, I move that we approve the uh, invitation to bid for roof repairs at Howard Park as amended. Hey, quick, is this all the buildings or is this certain buildings? This is certain buildings. And is that identified in here? Yes, it is. Uh, North Side Equipment Building, Dugouts, and Concession okay. Stand. Okay. I saw that. I didn't get a chance to read it. Yeah, yeah that's good. Is. is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mitch. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That motion to approve the uh, 
Invitation to bid on the roof repairs passes 500. The second one is the resurfacing of the tennis courts at Howard Park. Very specific uh, requirements for the work to be done here uh, cleaning the surface, filling cracks. Uh, it's going to take a, a, a company with some experience doing this. The courts themselves are very well built in the first place. Uh, they've lasted a great period of time, and, and really with the proper work done now, that will really extend their life quite a bit. Uh, yeah, I had a question about the elite fill part. I didn't understand that. You had uh, a minimum scope of work and then two options that involved uh, or let's see, at least one option that involved an additional bullet about elite fill. Yeah, uh, work to be completed sure. and the following options. Um, is a, uh, this is a difference that was pointed out by when these were first uh, done last year by a tennis resurfacing company that explained that this is the way that it should be done because uh, this difference between the rubberized, uh, where is it again? my glasses. The rubberized liquid crack fill in the E330 acrylic binder uh, is a difference that we should scope out and have two different presentations on it. Oh, okay. All right, so we're going to get a, an A and a B. Yeah, this, this is based on, on the original estimates because this is all part of the state grant. This is based on the original estimates we, we received from a, a company that does this. From, you know, this is what they do is resurface tennis courts. And this is a suggestion on, on bidding formats to get the right, right things and the options that you want. Okay. So I, that elite full would do more than just do the crack. It would do it another seal on top of that. Yes. And on top of everything three yeah. times, and that'll be then. Yeah. It's it's this is more than just filling the cracks in and brushing it off this is going to be there's this there's a way to seal a tennis court and then line it properly and there's a type of paint and acrylic paint you use for the lines it's not you know like okay. lining a street it's uh it's a different type of material which is why this is is a little bit expensive but it'll preserve the the court for a long time a motion to accept a uh, request for bids for the resurfacing of the tennis court at howard park second <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Bid request for resurfacing the tennis courts is approved 500. The other thing that I've been talking about with uh, uh, a member of the Lions Club, their interest in being involved in some of the projects there. Uh, I think Mr. Harder will be speaking at the Lions Club tomorrow night on these things. Uh, there are things, the electrical work, which is an original estimation of $3,000. He's informing that they have people who might be willing to do that. We would cover uh, electricians. You know, we would cover the the permit fee, and this is my preliminary discussions with Ms. Hoy. We would cover the permit fee, the rental of the hoist truck, and um, any electrical equipment they need. But they would do the work voluntarily as member of the Lions. Oh, nice. uh, we've also talked about the basketball backboard and rim. Uh, there was discussion of of repainting those or something, and uh, they're not they're not very good. So what I would do is go forward with buying the equipment, and again, they volunteered, or they proposed to volunteer to, to take down the old ones and install the new ones. And again, any equipment cost involved in that, we'll just pay for, and uh, they'll do it as a volunteer project. They've also volunteered to do painting, or have proposed one of the proposals to uh, do painting. I asked him if he would stop at the rec meeting, uh, committee meeting next Monday, <coughs> excuse me, to discuss this with, uh, with the board. With the rec board. Uh, the other things that were on the original, the trail camera, because we would be saving some money with the uh, with the volunteer labor from the lines, we can, might be able to upgrade the security system. I also talked with Mr. Hardy about the front gates uh, as a project of doing something with those because they're, they're pretty bad. Uh, even the sign at the front, and uh, that's why I invited them to meet with the rec committee next week so that we could go through and all be on the same page. Uh, they may have a bid on, other people will bid on the tennis courts and things like that too. The water fountain also we might change because uh, 
the cheapest, most functional water fountain that I found for the grant application was a little over $2,000. And I was talking to Walter about getting an old-fashioned kind of uh, spigot for the end of it, the pipe, just so that when someone knocks it off, we can just basically screw a new one back on and not be a $2,000 water fountain that once it gets trashed is we're out 2,000. Hopefully the security cameras and everything will deter that, but it, it's just something that uh, 2,000 seems like an awful lot for a water fountain. That, <laughs> you know, and most, frankly, most kids bring bottled water or will buy one at the concession stand while they're there, so it's just not really. Well, we need water at the park. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, it's got, you know, yeah. baseball, soccer, yeah. all that stuff going on, yeah. uh, water's Water and bathrooms are a basic function yeah. at a park that size. So it'll be it'll be some kind of fountain, maybe not a two thousand dollar fountain, because I, I just thought that was like extraordinarily expensive for a, a water fountain. But yeah, well, if you try to get one that's vandal proof, that's that's what that's they boring. cost. They end up being a, yeah. a big block of cement. But just like a, a metal one sticking out of the side of the wall is is that much too? Uh, well, the one sticking out of the side of the wall, yeah, that, that one would be the first one to get ripped off. That's some, something I never saw because it was ripped off before I went to the park, but uh, I think that's pretty much what was there, and they're pretty easy to uh, smack down. So what we're, we're thinking of is something kind of like the old-fashioned one where you just go up and turn a knob and you would get water. You could fill your water bottle or get a drink and a drain, but it would be very simplistic so that even if it got damaged, it wouldn't be more than a trip to Home Depot for 20 bucks and come back with the new, the new fittings you need. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's gotta be uh, automatic shutoff. We can't just yeah. expect people to Yeah, just to, so when you crank it, just, it'll just float back to the way it was, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, I mean, are we really that afraid of the water fountain getting knocked off that we're not gonna put another one up? It just seems like uh, well, we can, something that you have at a park. There'll be, there'll be more things that you have. I'll, we'll have more things. That's just a, a, a okay. th thought right now. That's not in the bid process right now. We won't have to bid for that because pretty much uh, they'll all be uh, well under 3,000. You know, this is the highest I would ever go, 2,000 for a water fountain. And uh, we'll bring in some options, you know, as we mm -hmm. get closer to that point. But the big thing is that, that the Alliance have offered, uh, you know, a lot of work and uh, coordinating that in. Uh, the roof work, obviously, is something that we'll have done. Um, and the tennis courts, is, it's kind of specialty work, so we'll see who, who bids. But their volunteers are allowing us a lot more flexibility and maybe even upgrading the, the work to the tennis courts. And because we were only getting a $10,000 grant from the state, matching grant, uh, you know, I stopped counting things to do when I hit $24,000. So I'm sure there's more things to do. We, we can certainly find more things to do. So there will be no money left over from, from the grant, that's for sure. <coughs> we'll just move ahead and get the bids. And the tennis courts, a time frame could be very late in the year, but once it's done, it's you'll have courts ready for, for a long time. Do, yeah. do they get used a lot now? I know they used to, in the, like when they were first built 40 years ago or whatever, they were used all the time. Are there teams in town that use those up there in the practice or anything? Does anyone know? Well, yeah. I, I asked about that too. It seems not, nobody really has a good set on how many people do that. I mean, uh, some people I've seen in there occasionally walking up the street during the summertime. I have no idea the actual volume. I don't know how we would do that, except when monitoring, we might be able to do that. Uh, I have to tell you, and everybody who's looked at them, the, the quality of the original construction is extremely high. So for if we if the original estimate from last year was close to eight thousand, so maybe now it's even ten thousand. It's money well invested, no matter what it costs, because you're not going to replace those for, for anything. Maybe new, with uh, new netting, uh, new signs, and some enforcement. Or please don't walk your dogs on the tennis courts, because uh, I've seen that too, where people unleash the dog and let the dog run around inside the tennis court. Oh, because it's fenced in. Because it's <laughs> fenced in, and it's really you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, unfortunate, uh, and we're only going to redo one of the basketball courts with the, with the new things. Just see okay. if that attracts anybody to go up there and, and play some ball there. And maybe when parents come up where other kids are playing soccer, someone will go over and play on a on a revitalized court. You know, it's uh, 
we'll put the opportunity out there how much it'll be used. I know kids play basketball over here all the time at the school. Mm -hmm. So maybe with new backwards and things, some other kids will go up to the park and, and play. Maybe, yeah, maybe start a little summer program for kids or something. Yeah, I mean, the yeah. elementary school, get them interested in tennis. Opens the thing up and um, brings it up to, uh, hopefully it'll bring it up to a level where everything is fairly restored by the end of the year. And uh, then we can look at, at bigger and better things up there. I know that the, uh, the scouts are going to be working on, on the trail again in a couple of weeks, cleaning up. They're going to have a camp out in the park and uh, work on the trail. Uh, so we'll have painted buildings, re-roofed buildings, new tennis courts, or refurbished tennis courts, and uh, it'll be a different park by the end of the year. So. Did you have anything else to say about Green Up Day, item 13? No, uh, I think we covered that earlier, May 2nd, and uh, you, everything except for maybe the ladybugs will be the same. I had no idea there were 60 ladybugs put out. So. <laughs> Karen put a lot of work into that. She form. did. Uh, I had a nice talk I, with her I, about I, this and everything, and I was <laughs> like, wow, Karen, you put in a lot of work to this. Did the, <laughs> did the ladybugs get stored somewhere? I, I <laughs> believe Karen has the ladybugs. <laughs> so. And I believe Karen uh, bought the little... Uh, the Susan B. Anthony dollars yes. to give people who found a ladybug mm -hmm. out of her own pocket yes. each year. Yes, he, she left from the, uh, I understand it was like coffee and donuts or whatever she had here. And, and yeah, she basically funded this and organized it. And I understand she did talks at the schools and everything else. And uh, uh, it's quite quite a lot of volunteering went into that. And uh, we, ju we just don't have the people to do that. The rec committee just simply is not able the huge recommendation of two people. So if anyone wants to volunteer to be on the recommendation, that would be fine too. But they don't have the time or, or the ability to go around and do all that this year. So it'll be a little bit downscaled for this year. And if we get volunteers, if you want to volunteer, we can pick it right back up next year. Um, yeah. <clears throat> all right, item 14, requesting application, applicants for animal control officer appointment. Okay, basically what I want to do is, and this is open to everyone, including our current uh, uh, animal control officer, the town currently has a payment line for an animal control officer, and then we pay a stipend of nearly $500 a month to leave holes or kennels. Uh, what I want to do is advertise for an animal control officer and look for a competitive bid on a place for to place the dogs if the animal control officer picks it up. That would be on a, I hate to say it, but dog by dog basis. And most of this works by the fact that if our ACO picks up a dog, brings it to the kennel, the kennel holds the dog for seven days. If it isn't claimed, we'd have to pay those seven days. So you agree to a rate on that. And then uh, if it can't be adopted out, we'd have to take other action and we'd pay for that as we do now. Um, if the dog's claimed by the owner, the owner's responsible for the kennel bill, and that all has to be settled before the dog's released. Uh, so I would like to see cutting down on the $500 a month we're currently spending on a kennel, whether or not we have a dog or not. Uh, also, at some point, when this ordinance was passed, and, and the animal control officer's duties are limited by state law and by our own ordinance, which is allowable under state law, this is all the ACO has to do, is respond to these types of calls and, and take action. Um, also, at some point, and these forms that I've never seen, uh, there's an animal control incident report. If they get all out, you just the ACO fills it out. We get a copy so we know what the ACO is doing. I mean, we're paying. We, we should have some idea. There's a dog release agreement. Uh, when the dog's released the owner, it's signed. We know who's paid what. There's a simple monthly report form just so we have some records of what we're paying for it. We don't have any of these forms, and we don't receive any of these forms now. Um, and it's just a way of keeping track. Now, uh, in the investigation I've done of other places, there's, uh, you guarantee pretty much like a half hour a day so that the person can call into a dedicated phone line and take messages or listen to the messages anyone's left about it, any animal control problems, and they respond to that. You pay uh, a minimum of an hour if the person's called out. And of course, anything over that. Uh, but there's no monthly stipend as far as a kennel or anything else like that. 
Uh, I think we should bid it out. And I, like I said, it would be open to uh, anyone who can provide the equipment, the transportation, and the kennel. Uh, we will also work on a con contract with a local kennel. Uh, there's one in, in Bennington, that Bennington uses one over here in North Bennington. Uh, there's other kennels in, uh, in the area too, or even uh, the animal hospital may be interested in some kind of arrangement. But uh, at $500 a month right now, uh, I think it's time we found out what else is out there. And then let's just see. If nothing else, maybe if the arrangement stays the same, uh, we, we negotiate what we're doing now. I mean, uh, it's uh, the only job description uh, was written by the person who has the job, and it's it has really, it's nice, but this is what we need to do. It's a very limited scope position, and everything else uh, the town really doesn't need to be involved in or, or pay for. So I think it's just a, a time to move on. I've spoken to a couple of ACOs in other towns and how it works, and uh, every town is different. There's no structure from the state saying, you must appoint this and it works this way. Nothing like the health officer that has a bunch of rules. It's either you follow the state law or like we did, we enacted our ordinance based strictly on the state law and you follow that. It's pretty simple. You get the call, you pick the dog up and you bring it to a kennel. It's either claimed or unclaimed. Uh, we really don't need to get much deeper into it than that. Vicious dog complaint, well, that's a whole nother matter, but that all winds up in front of the select board. But there's limits to the scope of it. And I'd just like to see us get back to the scope of what the, what the ACO is supposed to be doing and, uh, you know, hopefully pay a little bit less for it. Makes sense to me. Yep, I agree. Big, big, biggest complaint I'm hearing is that our current person just doesn't respond to mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. Correct. And, and, you know, we, we get like an annual report, but, uh, I mean, one dog was picked up and I had the person sitting at my desk uh, seven days later at two o'clock and it was exactly seven days later at two o'clock and that's when you can euthanize a dog and she was like I don't want this dog euthanized I might be able to do anything I'm like well, I didn't even know that we had a dog because we don't get any of these reports that someone took the time to make up but we don't get them turned in and I, I think as, as any if we have an ACO and it's not even is, is an employee of the town, you should know what's going on. It's yeah. that, that simple. So if it's all right with the board, I'm going to pursue that. And uh, sure. hopefully by the next meeting or the meeting after at the latest, we'll be able to appoint uh, someone and move on. All right. By consensus, we'll uh, allow David to proceed with uh, uh, requesting applications for animal control officer. And we're at a 15, Town Administrator's Report. Yeah, one more thing to sign. We're going to re-sign the annual financial plan for Town Highways. I was down District 1, and we just changed the number. We changed the format a little bit. It's the same amount of money. Uh, this is actually just the town's budget. We put things in different columns. Just it works better on the grant later on. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's the same numbers. It's just changing that one form that has to be signed by the board. That's basically the town highway budget, $732,000 and, and change there. But on the other one, uh, we had originally discussed putting in the Class 3 road grant, the uh, culvert fund, and they said take all that out of there because uh, they don't want that in there. They just base the, uh, the funding out of the actual uh, maintenance budget. All right. I approve, I move that we approve the Annual financial plan for town highways uh, for submission to the state. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Approved 500. Zero, zero. Is that all for? Nope. 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 We gotta, I'd like to. Uh, just remind everyone, we have two ongoing burning complaints. Uh, both have been investigated in the past. Uh, I've sent a, a warning notice out to one party that's going to be followed up again. Uh, I've spoken to uh, Jerry Madison, the fire warden. He's following up on both of them. 
again now, and we're going to contact the sheriff. And uh, just reminding everyone that we do have a burning ordinance in town. It's online. You can call a fire warden if you have any questions, especially in this very dry season. Uh, if you're having a fire and it gets out of control, you will be held responsible. If you don't have a permit and you're burning or you're burning in the village or you're burning garbage, the fines are quite large. And uh, we are moving to have this enforced by the sheriff and we'll issue our own summonses if need be. Um, so please do not burn in the village and do not burn anywhere unless you've checked with the fire warden. This is a, this is a, can become a serious issue. There were a couple of uh, fires lately just around here. I believe last Friday afternoon or Thursday afternoon, there was Train. one up the road here. Train, we were, trains couldn't go back up through because it was far yeah, besides the tracks. Yeah. Was it the train started? Was it a spark from the train or was someone, someone burning? I don't, I don't know. No, I, don't I saw that. I saw yeah. that and uh, I yeah. saw a guy go by with the fire through the truck. I saw him go over to the North Station and I heard a whoop whoop, but I didn't see any trucks go. He must have gone out the back way yeah. instead of he came down 7 and he went on. I was wondering if, but I thought it was Lake Shaftesbury, but it must have been farther on. It was pretty uh, far up. Depot. Yeah, yeah. On Depot. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we have to, have, everyone has to be aware of that. And burning garbage, which has come up in, in two recent cases also, is, is kind of a major violation. And, and this is only requires buying an access permit and a sticker and taking your garbage to the landfill. So uh, there's really no way around that. That's a health hazard and we need we, we will bring an end to it it had stopped with a letter one of the complaints and uh if the letter's not going to have effect then then we'll just sign complaints uh, uh is oliver duran retired as as the as fire warden not officially i don't okay. believe yet but that might be part of the the votes because i know oliver was talking about yes, okay uh jerry is is moving into that capacity too okay. and i've informed him of bo both the recent cases that that i've uh, been questioned about and uh, he's familiar with both parties and he's going to continue uh, looking into that. The other thing is for a lot of people who have these concerns, especially about burning, uh, the thing really to do is to call the fire department when the burning's going on and have them respond. That way I get some written notification that there was an illegal burn taking place. To find out afterwards, I can't do anything. Unless I see the fire, I can't do anything. Unless the sheriff shows up, and sees the fire, they can't do anything. Uh, call when the burning's taking place so that someone can record that they saw a fire burning or be willing to come forward and, and sign a complaint because it has to be in our presence. We can't, we can't just base it on, on someone saying that, you know, the night before last they were burning outside. We need to have some immediacy to it. And for burning like out in the woods, just starting a fire that's way too big, uh, you know, just call the fire department. They'll come, they'll record it, and we can pursue that. If the fire department says they came and, and to this burning, we can pursue that. But we can't really pursue something we hear about a day later. You know, it's just very difficult. Uh, the next item is just a matter of information, speaking of fires, that there will be a fireworks display for a private wedding. This will be in June. It's permitted by the, by the state. And us and Joe, this is from Joe Vatican. I just want to make you aware of it. Uh, all the permits are in insurance. It's a professional company out of Rhode Island, I think. So someone's having a wedding and they're going to have fireworks. So where's it going to be? Uh, <laughs> Rollin Road. No, uh, <laughs> Maple, Maple Hill Road. Uh, I remember saying, wow. Okay, we have. <laughs> We have one more thing. Today is uh, LEOP Day. Local Emergency Operations Plan has to be signed today. I uh, just got this this morning from Jerry. This requires the chair of the select board to sign <coughs> somewhere. On the first page, if you've taken your ICS 100 online. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll sign this. That I've taken we'll sign this tomorrow to go take your course. And uh, this is required by the state every year. It's the, it's the local emergency operations plan. I'm sure you've all. And it's due today. No, it, it's due by the end of the month. So if, oh, okay. if the ICS 100 is like a 20 minute course, which uh, uh, I'll refresh everyone's. We all have to take it. Right. The whole board, myself, have to take it. Uh, it's online uh, at uh, FEMA, and there's links to it. You just take it. It's a pass fail. It takes maybe 20 minutes. And it prints out a little certificate for you. And we all have to do it by the end of the month? Uh, one of you has to do it by the end of the month. 
as I stare at the chair. <laughs> the chair, the chair, the chair. <laughs> that goes without saying, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's very short, but then, then we can sign this. Uh, okay. I mean, and I, then I sign it or I do I sign uh, it? Yeah, you'll just have to sign it here. Uh, uh, am I signing for the board or am I signing for myself? Well, you're signing for the board. So the board should approve this now and then you can sign it when you uh, I'll make, I'll make a completed motion your that extensive we have training. Tim sign the local emergency operation plan. Pending Second. his completing the ICS 100 training. Pending, pending ICS 100 training. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That. Uh, Motion to accept the local emergency operations plan passes five zero zero. Pending, pending taking the training. Your graduation from that course. Uh, we have one catering uh, uh, liquor control application. This is for an event at the president's house for Bankton College up on Madison Avenue. The event is June fourth from five p.m. to nine p.m. with approximately forty-five guests. It'll be uh, catered by Aramark, uh, doing business as dining hall, K&A, whatever that is. Uh, all we need is for the board to uh, have this in the record and that you approve of it, and then it'll be signed by Judy and sent back in. Motion to accept the request for a cater. Uh, it, it's a permission for the board. It's permission for, for uh, a liquor usage at uh, distribution. At the President's House on the Madison Avenue in Shaftesbury for the Bennington College. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 But then Judy signs it. So. Yeah, Judy signs it. You don't sign that. That's okay. just for the board. It has to be in the minutes of the meeting. Okay. And then Judy signs and seals it. And the last thing is just a reminder that the municipal, municipal solid waste variable rate pricing ordinance is on the website. It's in the Bank and Banner on Saturday, this past weekend's edition. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And um, it's at the post office, it's at Paul Inns. You can get copies here if, if you want a copy, we'll make you a copy here. Um, <coughs> that's about it. Yeah, uh, we're going to work on those forms for the registration form. Yeah, we're going to approve uh, those at one of the meetings, and then we'll just get those in for for July. So hopefully next meeting or two, I'll rework those according to what else everyone else has done, and uh, we'll approve the form and registration form and go forward with that. Do we need another hearing for an ordinance, or did we satisfy that with our last? Yeah, uh, that you have to have a, have it uh, at two or three meetings. We'll do this one, the next one. And uh, that'll be the last, it's not really a hearing. Uh, anyone who has questions can come in for it. The 60 days, you have 44 days, an a, a appellant has 44 days from the first meeting to file a petition to uh, ask for, uh, to be reopened. Uh, I haven't heard any comment on this at all. Fortunately, most of, uh, as mentioned, there's most of those things in this we're already doing anyway, and we do pay to throw yeah, uh, for some towns, the biggest thing is to pay the throw because they yeah. don't do it now, and yeah. we already do it, so it's it's not there's really not much of a big deal on it for us. It's pretty straightforward. Actually, our, our little operation is pretty advanced by the standards of this new agreement, mm -hmm. so um, we're in pretty good shape. But uh, yeah, the uh, the ad's been in, it's been posted, it's on the website, and uh, uh, the next meeting we'll bring it up for the third time and. Uh, that's really it, unless someone comes in and asks questions, and we'll be set to go. Or if the petition's filed, we'll have to see. And that's all I have for tonight. Okay, thank you. Uh, item 17, capital equipment replacement schedule. Uh, this is something that Dave and I have been working on. Um, David brought to our attention that uh, we are, um, we have been financing our cap, our road crew equipment recently. Uh, I think that, uh, it, I believe the history is that uh, a few years back, a, a few big pieces of equipment broke all at once, and uh, we were in the middle of a recession, cap, and we didn't want to. we're capping the landfill. I think we're capping the landfill, too. That's, mm -hmm. That took a lot of money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. um, and we were in a uh, period of very low interest rates. And so rather than uh, going to the town and asking for 
uh, a big tax increase to pay for equipment that we needed to replace. We financed it. It's not an unreasonable thing to do. Um, now, uh, in the next couple of years, we're going to see uh, that financing end. We're coming out from under those uh, debt payments. And it's uh, time to start thinking about how we want to handle that going forward. And so Dave and I have been looking at a, at a few options for how to do that. Uh, one is to save for it. The other is to, to borrow for it. And it's, uh, it's not a slam dunk uh, given that interest rates are so low right now. And uh, as, as you'll see, I think the answer is to save for part of it. But uh, here's our, our equipment inventory. And it shows the, uh, the year that we bought the item, uh, the expected life of that item. Uh, and I guess there could be some, some, uh, some debate there, but that's what Dave and I have come up with, at least how long we would like the stuff to live. Um, and then the year that it would be replaced, uh, what it cost when we bought it, and what we expect it to cost when we replace it. And what we've done is just assume that over the lifetime of that, it's going to uh, inflate at 2% a year, uh, which has been a good number for the, the CPI for the last few years. And I, so I don't see the uh, road foreman's truck on there. Road yeah. foreman is the Dodge 5500. Yeah, I'm sorry. Top oh, no, I meant that. No, okay. I'm sorry. Yes. 2013 batch. I, I think 12 years is too much, too long for a pickup truck. Yeah, even the, even the one ton. The, the, you know, to be honest, the, the Dodge, I don't really anticipate uh, having very long. Uh, I've already talked some about the need. The F550, stretching that is, is going to be hard. But... We're still paying for, for the Dodge. I didn't mean to get into this tonight, but as long as it's come up, might as well. The Dodge, the Dodge 5500, we're still making payments on. I think there's two or three years more payments. It was purchased in, in coordination with the Volvo. Uh, if I can break that apart and we can use the Dodge 5500 as a trade-in to replace the F550, uh, we can carry the payments forward without increasing the payments and, and replace the truck we need, which is a functioning uh, F550 or equivalent vehicle, which will be good for plowing the streets, uh, and that that will sh shave some money off there. He so you're talking eliminating one vehicle. One yeah, vehicle. yeah, and and if there comes a period where we, we're talking about needing to get one back, uh, we can look into that. The uh, functionality, um, as was determined when it was purchased, is one thing. Looking at it now and, and the economics of it, it seems worthwhile to trade in a truck that has value now, the 13 Dodge, and uh, trade it while it has a good, good, good value to it, and replace the truck that that uh, is hurting. The, the six Ford is hurting. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's it's it is hurting, uh, and we can definitely pin it together for a couple of years. But uh, again, if an opportunity is there, maybe it's time just to get the proper piece of equipment and uh, uh, do it. It's, not, it's just a change of uh, what you view the utility of the vehicle as being. Uh, right now we have a, a more serious need for a proper one ton than the uh, Dodge. The Dodge has a dump body, but converting it, I asked you, converting it to a proper dump body would be, you know, too much. Mm -hmm. but the 12 years for the, for the bigger trucks, uh, again, it, it kind of depends on, and this is talking to other, other people, some towns are, are getting more out of the trucks uh, as they move away from the heavy amount of salt they've been using, uh, which we're trying to do. And if you're talking about pre-coating roads, maybe we can stretch these vehicles out. And especially when you get into, uh, you know, the single and, and tandems, you know, the replacement cost of these is getting, you know, quite quite high. I mean, you're looking at a tandem, the 13 tandem there, uh, just by doing a simple inflation rate is going to be $235,000 when it has to be replaced. You know, we're getting into some serious money and, and stretching the life by, uh, in a, even an aggressive maintenance program. Uh, every year is, every year is, mo is money. You know, it's, uh, you know there's, there's two ways of looking at it. I agree. There's looking at it, keeping a truck 
Uh, like the last one, Steve, I think when we traded that in, we got $25,000 for the, you know, uh, it's kind of a marginal return. Could, could we have made that truck for, for a lesser amount of money last two more years? You know, possibly. It's, it's, a, it's an approach. These are estimates. Of course, you don't know. You could have the, uh, you know, the truck that just fails to function properly after nine, ten years, and it just has to go because you're just replacing too many things. And there, there are variables in this stuff. Ten years is yeah, yeah. On the single axles too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And trucks who can play with the, the backhoe and the excavator, uh, I mean, these are two long-term vehicles, and, and the hours on each of them now are, are pretty minimal, and they've been around a while. So I would, I would imagine with proper maintenance, both of these would even extend past that lifespan. Uh, the excavator has, what, 400-some-odd hours on it, and... Roughly 600, okay. Yeah, and it's been that, around. That for, excavator, Dave, has been used 15 hours a month. Yeah. So it's about 600 hours an hour it's costing us. Yeah, and as a, as a heavy, you know, as a construction a piece of equipment, I mean, really it could do uh, 50 times that in a month. And well, yeah, so we're, we're going to have one, it. Number one, it should be used more. Yeah. And it, number it, two, I think the lifespan of that can be more than 20 years. Yeah. I do too, because it's just not getting the use that would really tear I mean, it's it It's not like you're out putting a thousand, two thousand dollars a year. Yeah. Of, yeah. You know, on a regular construction job. Yeah, we're into our uh, third year with it, uh, second, uh, two and a half years into it, and we have 600 hours on it. So that's going to be around a while. The backhoe, of course, because you have the excavator, the backhoe is going out less. Right. So you have two pieces of equipment here that uh, will probably extend out. The the big issue is. Uh, the grader used from uh, almost year round because it does have plowing capabilities too. You can put a wing on it and push back snow with it too. So 25 years is probably uh, maxed on that too, I would think, Steve, if you think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there's, there's options to use that to, to push back snow and things. It's another vehicle you can put out there. Um, the next big one really coming up, if we, if we work the Dodge into the Ford, would be the 09 single axle that uh, is, going, is going to need to go pretty soon. All right, well, um, this is all good and needs to go into uh, this discussion. What I've uh, been looking at really is the finance questions. And once we uh, uh, kind of settle on the finance questions, or even even before that, we can go in and look at the specifics of uh, how long we think we're going to get uh, out of each of these pieces of equipment. But for, uh, for our first blush, uh, this is what, uh, what we came up with. So I'd like to look into the possibility, Tim, of uh, maybe possibly cutting down one truck and one man in the wintertime for plowing and just contract that out. Um, then, then you're down one employee, and you're down on the equipment, and you need to better in the wintertime, and you don't necessarily in the summer. Yep. Um, I think that should be looked at. It's a different question than what I'm Well, addressing. no, but I mean, but, yeah. Yeah, I kind of goes in with what we're talking about. Yes, now. I agree. I agree. It's something that we've been, been talking yeah, about lately. We've been talking about that, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think Paul will hire trucks in the wintertime for plowing. Well, yeah, I, well, I don't want to go too far astray, but many towns across the state, and I was just up in Montpelier last week, and, and there's towns talking about um, contracting out instead of having, you know, uh, extra vehicles and things, contracting out. And the, the money pretty much stays local anyway because you, you do a local bid and you wind up getting a local person with a truck who wants to do the plowing. Right. You know. Um, I... I think that's a, a good point and a question that Dave and I have been talking about, one that we ought to explore. Um, I will say that previous uh, select boards have explored that question as well. I was talking to Lon McClintock recently and said, and 
um, they considered that question, the, the balance between full-time crew and contract labor. And uh, they did some polling of towns and, uh, some years back. And uh, what they found is that towns that had moved toward contract labor were moving back toward full-time labor because of quality of service, that they didn't feel like they, they got uh, the plows there when they needed them or the, the, the quality of the road construction that they needed uh, when they hired it out. So uh, more control. More control. So um, I think it's still a valid question to ask. I've been, we've been asking it lately. I think we just need to explore it in depth. Uh, so here's the, the kind of the punchline of, of this is um, if you, uh, if you, uh, you know, we've got $1.8 million worth of equipment that that's the cost that it's going to be when we replace it in whatever year. Um, if we uh, save for reserves, uh, we save for that and we earn interest on that money at half a percent because that's what you can get now, maybe. That's not what we're getting now, but I'm being optimistic, saying we can get half a percent. Um, we, you know, we are in $100,000 interest over 20 years, you know, spread out variously, and it ends up saving us a little bit of money. Um, I, I was surprised to find this. I went through this whole exercise using 5% for my rate of return, uh, and then you save significant money uh, relative to the actual cost over 20 years. Uh, but you can't get that. I talked to Stu Hurd in Bennington. They have all their reserve funds in one fund. That one fund earns 0.3% right now, 0.3%, less than inflation. And that's part of uh, uh, what goes into the, the finance question here is uh, the question of uh, putting large sums of money in the bank where they lose value relative to inflation. Um, so, uh, and then we can uh, balance that against the cost of not saving at all for, for, the, for the stuff and just uh, uh, finance it when it comes due. Uh, in that case, uh, you end up spending money on interest over that period of time. But over 20 years, um, $300,000 is not uh, a huge amount of money. That's over 20 years. That's not per year. That's the total total cost there. And even if, uh, you know, debt went up to 6%, uh, it still, you know, ends up being $2.1 million to buy uh, $1.8 million worth of equipment over 20 years. So it's a, it's kind of a, almost becomes a philosophical question. Uh, and I guess kind of a predict the future kind of question. You know, are our return on investment rates always going to be this low, and our uh, debt service rates always going to be this low. So, uh, looking at each of these uh, individually, this is if we just debt finance everything, and I've, for simplicity, assumed that we finance everything over five years. And these yellow bars indicate uh, when uh, stuff is due to, to reach end of life over the next 20 odd years. This goes out to 2035 here. That's just your first graph. Right? That's this um, uh, vertical graph. Right. Um, the years. Yeah, the years, uh, the mm -hmm. replace year yep. is where those yellow bars pop up. Yep. yep. And so uh, this is the graph of what we're currently spending on debt. So we're, we're spending $200,000 per year on debt service right now, and those payments are going to go away in the next uh, few years. And so if we uh, take on new debt to finance that equipment, this is what that looks like, this red line, financing everything for, for five years. And then uh, the purple line is the sum of those two. So uh, we immediately, as soon as uh, this current batch of uh, stuff that we had to buy all at once comes out from under debt service, we start dropping down, drop down as low as uh, uh, $21,000 here, but then if we don't smooth it out with any savings, what we're looking at is 
big fluctuations. You know, one year we go and say, we're heroes, we're only spending $21,000 in debt service, and then a few years later, the next select board has to borrow almost $200,000 to, uh, to buy that. So the, the real downside of debt finance is not the cost of debt, it's the fluctuations of when things break and you having to, uh, to finance it all at once. For some, uh, for some reason, people that I talk to in town just, just feel that the town shouldn't be in debt. I, 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 it's a philosophical thing again. So. Yeah, it, it, it is kind of philosophical. I'm, I'm that way too. Uh, I have a friend that I have this argument with all the time who has a 30-year mortgage and I have a 15-year mortgage. And uh, it's, it's, it, it's almost philosophical. It comes down to, you know, if you want to do the numbers, what you get on your investment relative to what you get on your debt. And really, uh, you're, you're not getting much on your no, investment I, now. I, uh, so uh, this is the other option if we uh, um, save it all. And this is where you, you take each piece of equipment, you see when it's going, going to come due, and you uh, calculate how much you've got to save at uh, 0.5 uh, return on investment. Uh, and then you add all those up. And that looks like this line here, which uh, uh, goes up fairly quickly. And then you know we've got to start saving for you know, this batch of uh, stuff that's coming due here. And if you look at the total of debt service plus savings, uh, to save for all of it, you're looking at maintaining $200,000 a year, either in debt service or savings, uh, for a number of years. That doesn't really start to come down until you get out to 10 years from now. Uh, The other thing that's uh, interesting is this. Uh, that come from? Now this, what is that? this, you know, this is the green line. This is the green line, which is the fund balance that we would acquire to do all this uh, savings to save it all. So this green line is on this green scale over here. So each year we're putting in this amount of money into a reserve fund. This is the size of that reserve fund. Okay, so it drops down goes up to half a million, it drops down when we buy this batch of equipment, then it builds up to, uh, I'm sorry, not a half a million, uh, yeah, half a million, well, 900,000 here, uh, over a million here in anticipation of two big pieces of equipment out here. And when I first looked at this, I thought, that's, that's too, too much, but I, if you think about it, uh, the reserve fund's never going to go to zero unless everything is bought in the same year. So you're always partway through saving for the pieces that are going to break later on. So you've got a big reserve fund. Um, problem I have with that is we're putting a lot of money in the bank and watching it uh, earning half a percent interest on it and watching it lose value at the rate of 2% a year. And uh, I'm not comfortable with that either. Uh, so uh, what I came up with is kind of the Goldilocks option, a little bit of both, was uh, just arbitrarily I said, well, instead of putting what I actually calculated as what we need to save for everything, what if we just save for half of it? And that uh, ends up being this line here, which is half of the uh, reserve payments that we were doing before. The, uh, the debt plus reserve drops down and stays down, so we'll we'll go from spending $200,000 a year on debt to, uh, you know, a hundred and a quarter very quickly, and that works its way down to about a hundred in the out years. And then if you look at the reserve fund that uh, you get doing that, that's the green line, and on this green scale over here, it never gets more than half a million dollars there. Um, which, uh, and it's pretty good. Uh, it doesn't go negative until you get out here into 2035. So uh, uh, it doesn't save all of it, but it, it does a good job. And you think about it, uh, this is on the order of uh, $75,000 here where it goes negative in the year 2035. You know, if we've, if we've been saving regularly and in the year 2035, the select board has to borrow 
uh, $75,000 to, to buy a piece of equipment. That's not a, not a terrible thing. And so um, that's where I'm kind of coming out in the end is looking at this is uh, I think in terms of uh, bringing the, the, the cost down on a per year basis and saving for equipment in order to smooth out the fluctuations, uh, something like, uh, you know, uh, you start out with, uh, that's around fifty to seventy. Whoops, fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars worth of uh, saving uh, over the long term. It's it's around a hundred thousand dollars a year that we put into reserves to to pay for that equipment. But you're borrowing the other half. No, no. This buys all the equipment. Oh, it does. Yeah, this buys everything. It's uh, it's just that it doesn't cover the full cycle, so that when you get out here. Okay. Uh, you've gone negative. So, uh, you know, at some point in here, you know, you might have to reevaluate where you are when you're mm -hmm. looking at mm -hmm. this big batch of equipment here. But for, you know, 10 or 15 years, if we save around $100,000 a year, yeah. uh, and we can do that very easily as we come out from under these debt payments, yeah. Our, yeah. our total uh, after starting in FY17 is going to be coming down. So we'll be coming out ahead. And we maintain around $100,000 a year for a number of years. We're we're paying for equipment for a long time. Okay. The other thing you might consider, Tim, uh, when before that Volvo was purchased, I checked with virtually every contractor in town that's got an excavator. We could have rented with an operator. An excavator that would do anything that Volvo would do for a hundred dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. So you might want to consider, you know, just like I say with the snow plowing, mm -hmm. kind of get the mix of different options in here, because there are several contractors in town that you you may not need a machine all the time. I mean, you're kind of stuck with the Volvo now because you've got the depreciation on it already, mm -hmm. and but that machine, there's no reason that machine could last the town 30 years. Mm -hmm. And that's a good point. You know, maybe in the year 2035, when that machine breaks, we don't buy another one. And the, this savings is, is, sure. is enough. Yeah. But I think, you know, those kinds of questions are, are relevant to ask. And, you know, we should be looking at, you know, are we, are we spending our money in the right way? Uh, like I was saying earlier, you know, uh, if 20 years is how long a road base lasts, we need to be laying two and a half miles of road base every year, and we're not doing that. And, uh, you know, maybe maybe contracting it out is a way to do it. Uh, maybe not. Uh, well, you could have a mix, just like you're doing now, and maybe contract some of it out. And, you know, I don't know. I've never heard that number that it's 20 years that a road base will last. I mean, where's it going to go? It's not going to move anywhere. You, you're what what makes the effect on a road is traffic, erosion, all kinds of things, and how it was built to start with. Yes. And, and it's like the White Creek Road, with the time they built that road, and they turned it into a black top road. They never had a proper base under it. I mean, as everybody knows from last year, with down by Brown House. It's all clay under there. Mm -hmm. You know, well, I've, I've seen them dig it out 20 feet of clay to put in a road. I would like to believe that that 20-year 20 num 20 number is conservative because no, I, uh, I, there's... I, I, I haven't heard there's that. It's variable. The, it comes from, from a road. study from VTrans. Uh, VTrans is responsible for uh, maintaining access roads uh, that are town roads that access certain state facilities. And it's a study by them on, on the replacement values for paving and, and gravel roads. So to a certain extent, 20 years for uh, a moderately busy road to clearly much longer for, for roads that aren't used very often, you know, real secondary roads. But uh, it, it was a study done that was going around the uh, road foreman's listserv on, on, uh, for cost estimating. And this is what VTrans came up with for uh, how they fund towns for repairs to their access roads, that are town roads that access or, or the main approach to a state park or something. 
So it's kind of an interesting study. Of course, there are variables like everything. There's variables on, on usage, but if you have a uh, you know a, a class three dirt road that's being used uh, you know on a frequent basis, like some of ours are, uh, it's it's not that far off. I don't think. Paved roads, you know, Harvest Hill should last longer, although Harvest Hill is pretty much at the end. But, you know, if you have another paved road that's used frequently, uh, you know, a maintenance and replacement cycle of 20 years is not, is not out of the question. Steve, can I ask what the thought is on the old grader? You like how long that will last? Yeah. Is, is the mechanics of it, other than the engine, okay, or is it all worn out? Is that a rough idea how many hours is that that edges? So so another engine rebuild is not without is would what, what, what might be reasonable because the machine is not worn out. Right. Okay. Or even a new engine? And, and David and I, when we did started putting this together, we were the opinion that when that grader breaks, we're not planning to replace it. Yes, I, I would agree with that. Yeah, you just have one grader and it just runs. You just run it all the time. And it's convenient to have two at this time of year, but the cost value of, of hiring a local contractor or, or getting one more. Well, we always run in Bodine's yeah. in the past, too. I mean, you know. The, it wasn't all-wheel drive, but still. Yeah, there are ways around it. Uh, sure. Okay. So just in terms of economics and philosophy and those kinds of questions, um, the, uh, the debt only is subject to fluctuations in terms of the, what we have to go to the, the vote is for in taxes as uh, needs to purchase equipment come and go. And it's also subject to uh, possible interest rate rises in the future. Although, as I showed there, even if it went to six percent, it's not—it's not a backbreaker uh, over the long haul. Uh, reserve funds is uh, philosophically, a lot of us feel is the way we ought to do it. Uh, but as I was showing, we would have to maintain the two hundred thousand dollars a year uh, uh, toward road equipment that we're currently putting into debt finance into savings for quite a while before that would drop off and we we end up creating large reserves that are are losing money uh, in terms of inflation and that just doesn't seem seem right either uh, but this uh, something in between where we save some somewhere around a hundred thousand dollars a year is, a, is sufficient to fund our equipment purchases for a good 20 years and uh, you know worst case is you know in the year 2035, when the grader and the excavator reach end of life, we have to borrow a little bit to, to finance that, or we, you know, somewhere in the, you know, 2020, as we relook at where we are relative to, you know, how we're doing things, maybe we're, you know, decide we don't replace the excavator, as Ken's suggesting, and just oh. rent it. Okay. I like Eight. number three. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. The Goldilocks solution. It's yeah. just right. I like that name. Little, little of that, little of this. Yeah. Makes sense. Questions, comments? Good job. Good job. It's pretty self explanatory. How are we limited to where we can deposit reserve funds? I was asking uh, VLCT about that, and um, I didn't get an answer that said we, we have to invest in zero risk. Uh, investments, but I was told that I was discouraged from thinking about that very hard, and I don't find anybody that's doing that. Yeah. Um, I think uh, you know when you're when you're using public money, yeah. you know yeah. if you put it in the stock market and the stock market is down the same year you yeah, have to buy an excavator, yeah, you're going to look stock stupid. <laughs> Sticking of something, but have them even long and the. Yeah. Back, the yeah. Even bonds have fluctuation rates, you know, a, a higher yield bond, a muni or yeah. something like that. It, it, all, 
has, has risk factors that again are discouraged for public tax funds. Uh, and there's the other portion part of having uh, the money uh, in these funds are more accessible than uh, uh, if it was tied term. up in a long term bond. Uh, if if uh, you know the greater uh, <coughs> the wheels popped off and we needed a new one, we, we'd need money, not taking a huge penalty from taking it out of a five year note or something like that. So we are kind of restricted in a lot of ways what we do about it. The good part about this and having it at 100,000 though a year is that this isn't new money. Yeah. This is the debt that we're no longer paying being put to work yeah. for us instead yeah. of paying out. So. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, I was looking at even treasury bonds. Um, you've got to hold them for 30 years to get 3%. Yeah. 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 Hopefully the interest will change a little bit because it is kind of preposterous now. The interest is below. I mean, it's, you know, it's it's essentially zero. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's it's amazing. Uh, hopefully that will change at some point during this. Yeah. It is low now. Until wage increases, I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Tony, you were going to report back on uh, our question that we brought up before about the community appropriations. We were asking just in terms of the unwieldiness uh, of the uh, the number of appropriations on the ballot and the, 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 the $60,000 a year that we're, we're spending on it, uh, not that it's not money well spent, but should we uh, re-ask the people, you know, do they want it bad enough to get a petition uh, to get back on the ballot? And you brought up the point that uh, they might have uh, – they might be depending on our money to help them get other money, and you're going to re look into that. Well, I, I contacted all of them. Uh, what I have found out, and I apologize, I don't have the, my folder with me, um, was that I was right as far as for most of them, their federal money and their state money is contingent on a local buy-in uh, contribution. For many of the organizations, those are assessments based on use by Shaftesbury residents. And they, they quoted the number of people in Shaftesbury that access their services. And it was a, and for most of them, it was a very small percentage of the total cost per person who accesses those services. Um, coincidentally, today in the Rutland Herald, Castleton is grappling with the same question. Uh, they require a yearly five percent, five percent of the tax, of the uh, voters' petition for everyone they put on the ballot. The uh, agencies are coming back saying this is very difficult and time-consuming, uh, and that you know it just doesn't work. And we'd like to do it another way. Uh, give us three years. If we're three years on the ballot, then it's an automatic thing. When I reviewed the form, and I apologize, I have not talked with Bob Holmes about it. When I reviewed the document, that's a, it's a pretty comprehensive document that is required by every agency. Um, I, my recommendation is keep it the way it is, have them yearly apply, and let the voters know, particularly when we've changed the, the way we're doing the the town meeting, the uh, annual meeting, is let them know that every agency they vote for adds to the bottom line of the yearly budget. Um, and I know it's cumbersome to vote for all 18, but I think it's a democratic, it's a democratic process. Um, you know, mm -hmm. people can in fact pick and choose what they vote for. Um, so, um, I mean, I can go back, and I have one other phone call I've got to make to, because uh, that person's no longer with the agency. But by and large, I found that their explanations, and everybody was great as far as explanations were concerned. They, uh, you know, it was a thought. It, every one of them seemed to me to be a thoughtful process uh, mm -hmm. that they went through uh, in order to ask for the money from the town. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Well, um, my inclination is to agree with Tony. Uh, I, I thought this was worth asking, and uh, I wanted to make sure that this was not becoming just an automatic thing for people. Uh, I know that I've I'd overheard a number of voters uh, in the polls uh, saying things like, just vote for all of them. You know, don't, 
don't question that. But uh, as you were pointing out, uh, you know, the vote was not constant on all those. And mm -hmm. last year, for whatever reason, the voters decided not to support a couple of them. Mm -hmm. uh, so there, it does appear that the voters are giving thought to it as well. So we'll uh, we'll stick to the same process. Now, do you want your box back? But I have a file folder, a bigger file folder. Oh, you got to return the box. You want the box? It came <laughs> with the building. Yeah, oh it's, got, <laughs> it's got this very sad looking box. Yeah, it came with the desk. I have to have yeah. it back. <laughs> Is there any other business? Uh, do you have bids on? Did you say you had another bid for uh, uh, Harvest Hills? Oh, oh, yeah. We had we had uh, gotten an estimate from Peckham on Harvest Hills. And I have an estimate from Baldwin's. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know where that's going to go until we, we start setting our priorities. Uh, because I have... Uh, uh, it's Buck Hill. Yeah, I mean, we did an estimate for, just out of curiosity, if we could get to this, for uh, 780 feet, 20 feet wide. We uh, uh, probably don't want to say any of these. Yeah, we don't. Out no, we're not going to say anything uh, out loud. But we do. We do have one, and that all has to do with when we get back into uh, uh, what we're actually going to do this year. The state grants that we've talked about before that, that we put in for, um, let's see where we go with those first off. Um, and then when the crew and, and all of us decide what we're going to do with our 2,100 feet of fabric, um, we may have enough to do some paving, but paving is so expensive. We really got to put more money into it. Uh, even uh, changing, like we have a paving reserve fund, which is really a road resurfacing fund because the roads, we only use it for class two matching, but some of our class two roads like airport are, are dirt roads. So we're resurfacing, you know, it's, it's a resurfacing grant or fund. So, um, you know, let's see what the state says. The state doesn't have a budget yet. Uh, keep your fingers crossed that, uh, you know, we, we at least get the 175. Would, would these be considered, would this be considered no. a bid? No, we have, no, that's just, that's just an estimate uh, okay. that we can work on to give us an idea of what we need to do. All right. So I have one because we got, I got one from Peckham's and, and, yep. and you have one from Bowdoin's. And, you know, these are not bids. These are just yep. okay. ballparks so we, we, we can think. I mean. Uh, you would have to go out to a formal bid. Right? Oh, no, they'll have to go out to a formal, believe me. Yeah, they'll have to go out to a formal bid. Yep. Okay. What Even have you got for Harris Hills? What, what, what do you figure that doing down there? Uh, the one I had was for reclaiming uh, chloride and uh, uh, a base and a top coat. Did anybody check a price I just resealed in that stone? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, we're just, these are just thoughts. Or had asked me about this earlier. I said, yeah, when we were doing the big projects, you know, we asked about that too, just to get some yeah, money. I mean, I'm just thinking that that would get you through a couple, three years, whatever, till you could pave it. Uh, yeah, as I said, when we get to... Uh, when we get to see how much money we're actually getting from the state, the we can get into what we're going to do from here. The, the oh, road, that's a good base. The, the, the road is not because we don't have a lot of money. Of, uh, inadequate this. base. No, so, so uh, it's dried out. Yes. The, the when when we get down a little bit, we can see what we can do. Yeah. Really? It's only about that thick. What what what's down underneath is the is the chloride and the and the wet ground. Well, yeah, because I mean I built the road up, but they paved it after I got done for the town. What's coming off is just didn't. Well, as far as I know, that's only been paid once since the 70s. That's right. Yep. That's beyond that 20 year line I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you think? <laughs> well, there you go. It, they last longer than that. <laughs> Case closed. <laughs> okay. Um, I didn't really note any action items. I think uh, looking back over the agenda, we need to, we ought to be getting close to closing on the North Road property, I would think. Uh, the, the funding is going to be Monday. I, I have not, uh, other than the funding, I haven't looked into the, the North Road. I don't know where okay. the real estate is. communicate with uh, yeah. the attorneys and see where we are on that. Yeah, I mean, uh, Ray stops in and asks where we are, and I'm, I just tell him the money is coming. I, I yeah, well, we got the financing there. taken care of now, um, and so that was the, the first big hurdle. So Yeah. 
I think once that's done, uh, it's a matter of just sh shuffling the paperwork deck and going closing. I yeah. Um, I mean, we're not doing anything with the house, so it's not a question of an inspection or anything. Uh, Correct. Yeah, it's, it's pretty straightforward. The only thing that we might want to uh, check is a septic, just as a matter of precaution. Well, we we well, let's not go there. We missed our deadlines for inspections on that. Uh, oh, they really we assumed that we weren't going to do any yeah. inspections. So uh, it, no, it's never going to be developed or anything. So it's just so, yeah. I don't think we're we're worried. If, yeah. you know, if there's something wrong with the septic, we're not going to do anything. We're not going to fix it anyway. So yeah, yeah. it's true. All right. Um, I move we adjourn. I'll take it. Second. Other All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye.